Hi everyone, in this video what we're going to do is we're going to do a custom SAF based authentication. In this case I decided to do this video because the design pattern is a little bit different than Windows Forms or Web Forms. So it's interesting to take a look to it. So well, first here I have a SAF Blazor application. It's basically empty. The only thing that we have so far is a domain object one with one property and it's called property actually property name so let's run this so i can show you that it's basically empty and then we will implement the authentication Now it's creating the database, that's why it's taking so long, it's the first time I run this application. So let's do admin. And that's it. So let's start. First, what you will do in any other application, I mean SAF application, you will go to the application and then change um, the security system to change the loan parameters and the authentication but in this case I'm going to do something a little bit different so first for Blazor what we need to do is to add I think it's an authentication provider I have notes here about that so yeah we need an authentication provider so in this case I'm going to copy this and come to this Blazor application and add a new class And I'm going to leave it like that because I'm going to rename it with code rush and I'm going to paste this. So basically this custom authentication provider needs to inherit from authentication standard version 2. So let's import the namespaces. And let's see. Doo -doo -doo. Command code rush. Sometimes it happens, especially on Blaze or application that you lose the intelligence and the autocomplete let's rebuild maybe maybe we get it back well at least we have a lot of errors about the namespaces but I think CodeRush is dead at the moment so sorry for that I'm going to open Visual Studio again And let's see, I hope it's working now. Yeah, so let's import the namespaces. And okay, basically the authentication provider needs to return on the create authentication method a class that represents the authentication so for that we will create a new class I mean I have that here also so we have the custom authentication provider and now we need to add the authentication class I will put it here in the same file so basically in this case we're not going to use a custom logon parameters we're going to use the default logon parameters so just let's import the namespaces here and if you have implemented this before I mean in Windows forms or web forms you know the trick that basically you need to override the authenticate method and do whatever you want with the information that you get from the logon parameters in this case we're getting the username and password and that's basically it so 
basically what I'm going to do is here um, ta -ta -ta -ta. let's see uh, what we need to do is something like this let's take this line out so basically I will use the base class to authenticate I'm not going to put any custom code here so basically here I'm going to add a to do okay and if basically this is null that means that there is there was an error I mean you were not able to authenticate so what I'm going to do is check if this is null then I'm going to throw an authentication error and that's basically it I'm not going to do a more complicated case basically I just want to show you like where you need to put this code and what you will do with the authentication is basically up to you in this case I'm not going to review it I'm going to just run the base authentication that is underneath this one and it should work basically so let's clear this so so far we have the two classes the custom authentication provider and the custom authentication so after you have these two what you need to do is you need to go to the startup class and in here we need to do a little change so you have this um, add authentication standard and the options so I'm going to comment this out I will put it down here and you need to do something here a little piece of code so basically that is this code so when you do add external authentication you have to register a principal provider uh, this was I mean I, I, I tried to implement this myself and I had some errors and I put a ticket to the support center and they told me Jose you forgot to register the principal provider so uh, you need to do this before and then you add an authentication provider and the authentication provider will receive the authentication standard options and also will receive the custom authentication provider that we just created so we have this here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in a different file move type to file and then I'm going to come here and the custom authentication I'm going to rename it the name file to match the type and good we have it so we have the custom authentication we have the authentication provider and also we register these on the startup class and basically that's it so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put a breakpoint here and let's see how it goes I mean basically it will come here you will see the username and password and then we will check um, the authentication on the base class that means authentication standard and if the result is not null we will return the result otherwise we will throw an exception so let's run this okay so let's do admin and as you can see we're here already so let's do step by step so see the user is admin the password is null and we will run the authentication of the base class in this case and it didn't work <laughs> uh, so what they're going to do here what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this out 
and I'm going to do what you see in the example from developer express I will do a bar well this will be the result also equals object space find object and this will be permission policy user and new binary operator and it's going to be like this username I don't remember if it's like with lower cases or upper cases and then the value will be username so let me So I don't need to do this. Okay, so let me check if username is with lower or upper cases. Username is Pascal casing. Okay, so it's username. And well, what we can do now that we have this here is like result uh, compare password and this check the password and if if this return false then we will throw the exception otherwise we will return the uh, the user so let's try to run this again. I guess you hear some birds in the background. At the moment I'm in El Salvador at my family home. So we have a lot of birds here in El Salvador, <laughs> basically. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Okay, this is null. So, okay, let's continue. This is the demo effect. Okay, so here let's do admin. And now we're going here and to two, two, two. username, password is null. Then we check for the user, we have the user, then we compare the passwords and then we return the result. And with that, I, I will be able to log in. Um, Basically, the idea here is that in this authenticate method, you can implement it as you want. So you can go to a web service, to your Active Directory, to do whatever you want. So you just need to override that and verify the parameters that come from the loan parameters. So um, that's basically it for from this video. Uh, what I wanted to show you is that the pattern is a little bit different and here you need to do do it in the startup and you need to make sure that you have these lines set up in the right way so I will put this example in github and well maybe I will change some lines or something to make it more clear or maybe do a documentation that okay remove this and add this um, but the code is like self-explanatory basically you just need to add the custom authentication provider and the provider should return a custom authentication class and in the class you just need to overwrite the authenticate method so that's it for this video guys so take care and see you guys in the next video bye